Is there anything else you want to add before we wrap up this podcast? Before I'll be awesome. Ask, I'm on. If, um, if my bad, my bad. you're good. Uh, so even though you know you kind of are, I guess, leaning a little bit away from computer science, I wonder if you ever thought about uh, starting some kind of program in Ethiopia when uh, with, you know, programming or teaching kids how to, um, you know, get into that field. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I think it's the, it's a gateway to like a whole new opportunity, like innovation, just like solving your country's problems if you know how to code. Like I have nothing against coding. It's pretty great. Um, personally, right now, I actually had plans like that with my cousin. He currently lives in Kenya. His name is Berakat. Um, mm-hmm. Something, something to do with programming to do for a country. Me personally, I was thinking of doing um, something similar to what you just said, like teaching kids how to program. But like everything was back railed during this whole worldwide pandemic, and that really slowed things up a bit. So I'm in the brainstorming phase for what I could potentially do for my junior year summer, which is like next year. So. Yeah, definitely. I, I I think it was something like that. Nice. Cool. Good luck. Um, yeah. <laughs> also, um a really major thing happened like a few days ago a few weeks ago, I would say, for Ethiopians that not a lot of media is covering, uh basically next next to none. And I don't think people are even aware of it. Um so basically if you do not know, uh Ethiopia currently suffers from a major currency debt, foreign currency deficit. So like if you go to a bank and you want to exchange money, like you have to have connections and stuff like that. Like we went through a whole loop of like stuff like that before I went for Oxford because I got the pocket money I needed needed to be foreign currency. And like, it's very difficult. So what mm-hmm. that has led to Ethiopians basically cannot use their credit, their debit cards to buy things online, they cannot earn money online. And for some stupid backward reason, you can't get money deposited into your Ethiopian bank account from a foreigner. But PayPal, really? yeah. But PayPal, a few a few weeks ago, they patched this their new service Zoom, spelled with an X. It now has forged relations with the third biggest bank, I believe it is Awash Bank in Ethiopia, and. Basically, you have you, Ethiopians now. If you have an Awash bank account, you can have the same perks, have the same benefits of an American. If you want to use eBay stuff like that, and that, that's just a major leap forward that I believe nobody's caught caught up on that. Oh wow! You know, um, I feel like maybe a big reason of this I might be completely wrong is uh, Jack Dorsey took like a three month hiatus in uh, in Ethiopia. Maybe he was like the catalyst that that pushed this decision. Because uh, doesn't he own PayPal or something? I think, I think he has a major stake in it. Yeah, but yeah, that's amazing. I didn't even know that. Wow. Wait. So would that make people that have bank accounts in the other banks in Ethiopia in Ethiopia um, like obsolete? Like what? Like, would that force a lot of people that really want to be able to use that service to get a bank account if they don't have it already in at Awash Bank? Um, yes, it would because currently PayPal does not support another bank, but like it's pretty much pretty much all banks are the same. Unless you're a shareholder at the bank, you would not realize the difference. So I don't think anybody's personally going to be affected by this because. All banks in Ethiopia, other than Semen Bank, I believe, you don't need any money to open an account, just verifiable identification. So I don't think anybody's going to be hurt in that sense. Like the pub, pub, the public is not going to be affected, more of the other banks themselves. But even though it's exclusive to Ash Bank, it's like a major leap forward. Like um, I was I, I was watching a TikTok of this guy. He he usually makes fun of Ethiopians who use social media when they have internet access, when they could be making money. That's like his whole pitch. Like I'm pretty sure you guys know of uh, 
platform Fiverr. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, which basically just like he encourages people to do online jobs that require no of like upfront operating costs, just like small jobs here and there, compiling videos for YouTube. And the way you would get paid for that is, um, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen it in Ethiopia that the most telephone, most people that own a telephone, they use prepaid. And the only way you could get paid for your services that you do online is to get prepaid um, phone credit, which is basically like, obviously, what would a hundred US dollars worth of phone credit do for me? Like I worked for that money. I want it in my bank account and on my phone. And previously that was the only option people would have to get to get to cash out on this. Wow. Okay. So that's like, wait, what was, what was the the phone company called again? Uh, the state phone company. No, the the one that you mentioned before. Hold on. Why am I blanking on the name? Um, okay. Wait. Never, never mind. Never mind. Um. Wow, okay, that's fascinating. I had no idea. It's like way encouraging now for Ethiopians, you know, the youth with the internet access and all. Because, like, the internet is cheap in Ethiopia to get just a sizable amount of internet. Now, all you need is, like, 23 U.S. dollars, I believe that's the equivalent. And, like, a lot of people are getting internet it's like at a rapid pace and now they could do something other than scroll on Facebook. Yeah. And imagine this is Ethiopia with like roughly one third of its population on the internet. So imagine what like 90% would be like. Yeah, that's the statistic. I did not know that. Yeah. Oh, uh, another thing you should look out for that. Maybe you've heard of it. There's a company called, uh, Blue Moon, and they do like incubation for startup companies. And when the power, when the Wi Fi went out, literally um, businesses cannot, I mean, I don't know if this is for all businesses, but most businesses cannot, they literally cannot do anything. Like I would go to work and literally just sit there and like twiddle with my thumbs. It was ridiculous. But um, Blue Moon does like incubation startups for companies, especially in like the agricultural business. And uh, their, like, main plan and drive was to try and get the most rural areas, like, technologically up to date. And they were just, like, creating different products that would help, like, rural farmers and how they can get Wi-Fi and how they can, like, communicate with uh, more urban cities and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, I think that's – that would be a really interesting business venture, just getting – um, I mean, I don't know how profitable it would be, but just getting um the rural cities on Wi-Fi. Yeah, like integrating the rural parts that that because like we we should capitalize on our population, have them as assets, not liabilities. You know, once they're on the grid, potential is infinite. Yeah, exactly. I, I did not know that boom. It's crazy. Yeah, you should you should research that. Um, 